Michal Elon, shalom. Hi, shalom. You were wounded on the October 7th attack. Tell, tell us where you were. You were in the Zikim base. Right. And you were there as a couple, a religious couple, bringing the spirit of the Chag of Simchat Torah. Exactly. We went with our um, actually eight children. We usually don't go with so many kids, uh, but we were there with eight of our kids volunteering. Um, and we met the soldier that the evening was very calm and nice. Um, we and sang then, with them. Mm -hmm. And then the morning after, well, there were the sirens, there were the attacks, the mortar shells, the attacks. And at one point you were treating a wounded soldier. Then you already understood that this was something out of the ordinary. Yeah. And then you, and, you and met then someone heard, you thought was a soldier. Yeah, then I heard shooting, very loud shooting next to me. And when I turned around, I saw a soldier standing in the entrance of the room, falling into the room. And he died in seconds. And then um, after a couple of seconds, I saw another soldier standing there. And I thought he came to help. But then um, he, he looked different. Something in his uniform looked different. Something in his, um, the way he stood. And then when I looked at his face, he just he looked at my eyes. And he, he just picked up his, his weapon. And I understood it's the terrorist. And he shot me. What do you what do you think at those moments? So this is no time to think. There's no time to think, and you're in shock. You, you understand that you're in a situation you've never been in before. Um, I think I just thought, how can I get out of here? What do I have to do uh, to get out of there? And after he shot me, I really I did myself a tourniquet. Uh, I took off my um, mitbachat my hair cover, cover. Mm -hmm. and I did a tourniquet and I tried going back to the place where my kids and my family were. Well, and meanwhile, I understand that two soldiers confronted him. One was actually stabbed, the other was able to eliminate him. Uh, well, one soldier was killed, I understand, right. four, by trying to save, to protect you while you were treating the, mm -hmm. the wounded soldier, a very young, nice soldier that you were able to, to, to meet. You, you knew yeah. him for yeah, a few hours. Yeah, his name was Neria, Neria Nagar, he's from the settlement in Ria. Uh, he was shot. We met him the night before. He sang with us songs of Simchat Torah, because mm -hmm. it was Simchat Torah evening. Yeah, and he was shot in the morning. Well, now you ran back to your family, with bas basically with all the soldiers, yeah. uh, in some sort of sheltered area. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about what happened there. The commanders started to, to go because they understood that this was an infiltration. What, what, before the shooting, yes. Before the shooting, they understood that something happening, something is happening, and they went to the watchtowers to to switch the trainees. There were trainees there, and uh, and they fought like lions. Right, because I understand that there were like around fifty terrorists who tried to come into this Zikim base, yeah. but only what? Only four. Only four succeeded, came in. and that was thanks to the commanders. Yeah, yeah. Only four came in. One is the one that came to us. Three others were eliminated also. Baruch Hashem, and no one was killed, thanks to them. Wow, now you came back wounded to the sheltered area. What could you tell us about what happened there in around, what, four hours? Yeah. First, I tried smiling to my kids, showing them I'm okay. You tried to smile. I did. My 16-year-old told me afterwards I looked pale and horrible, so it didn't look good. But, uh, but I tried. And we were there. Uh, Omri, my husband, pushed all he could, like um, shirts that the soldiers took off so he can push my bleedings. And um, we waited. Um, he called Magen David Adon, but they couldn't come. Um, and I understand that your children, what ages were there with you? Yeah. We had a 20-year-old was the, the biggest one, the elder one, and two-year-old. And we had also... Um, 10-year-old and a 9-year-old. So I understand the that there in the, yeah, the, in the sheltered area, they had an interesting communication with the soldier yeah, the who soldier. needed help. Yeah, they felt in danger, the soldier. So they asked them, what can we say? What Tehillim can what we prayer? say? What prayer can we say? And they taught them. They said together because uh, you couldn't do much there. And also they said it very um, um, not loudly because we were wow. asked to be quiet. So quietly they said it. So your kids had a role there. Yeah. Baruch Hashem. And they felt that? They felt the. Yeah, the, they felt they were, they were doing. Yeah, they felt they were doing. 
Uh, they brought water. They taught the ilim. Um, my 16-year-old came with a came with a dress. She said after after everything finishes, she would switch to this dress. But she brought the dress and we toured it and we made another tourniquet wow. and tourniquet to another soldier. And, and it was throughout those hours there was a big fear, of course, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, we there were three wounded soldiers in this sheltered place, in the Migunit. So, um, and they were moaning. Some of them weren't in a good condition. And me, and um, you didn't know what would happen. We waited for evacuation. That came after after about four hours. What do you remember from those moments of the the rescue? I was relieved, mamash, that someone came. I remember them just saying, "Fast, uh, one, two, three, we're picking her up." Um, and my kid, Noam, which is a 16-year-old, he took me. He was one of the ones that held me to the ambulance. And um, my husband asked himself, should he go with me or stay with the kids? It was a very big question because we didn't know what's happening around, that there were hostages. and But he knew he was pushing my uh, my wounds. Helping and him. Yeah, and they promised him that in about an hour they would take the kids. Do, so he said, okay, I, I will go with her. And um, he came with me to the ambulance and they took us to Balzilai. Oh, Hashem. Wow, now these days you're still being treated for your wounds. And I understand that just like back then on Simchat Torah, it was you, your family with the soldiers. Now also in this treatment, it's you and the soldiers. Yeah, yeah. How's that? These are my friends wow. now and they're amazing. Um, in rehab, it's the soldiers that are wounded from also from the 7th of October, but also afterwards from the war. Kept get yeah, they kept coming, and um, they're amazing. It's a lot of fun. Uh, they're very nice. We we talk to each other. We tell the stories, our stories. We feel like we have um, a common um, situation common, that we were common in. Common challenge also. Yeah. Now, what do you think that we should all learn from what you are now learning as you're with the soldiers and? Generally speaking, what we're trying to learn after what Israel has gone through. I think unity is the most important thing. We were fighting with each other. Each other. And I think that's the most important thing we have to think about. Um, it's difficult to, it's easy to say, it's very difficult to do. Right, because everyone's saying it now. We need right. to be united, we need to be united. You're saying we need to do things or we need to make decisions and there's challenges to be really truly united. You have to to think that this is the most important thing and even if you don't agree on something and even if you you think things should be should be held otherwise mm-hmm. this is my brother this is my nation I have to be even though it's not, I don't like what he says and you can do it it's just difficult. Okay, Michal Elon, with that important message, we'll end our interview. Thank you very much and feel better. Toda, thank you.